As mentioned earlier in the previous lecture, I feel like we still have a little bit of business logic in our imperative shell, namely updating the current counter and the current move. I believe regardless of whichever framework we're working with, for example, Vue or React, this is something we would want to be doing as part of our business logic, and I'm going to move this to the make move function. So let's go ahead and update our test and let our test failures drive our development. The first thing we're going to do is head up to our test and update this one. Instead of returning a single variable here, I'm going to return three variable. I'm going to call this one firstly board, or let's call it new board. We're also going to have the counter, and we're also going to have the current move. So I'm going to call this move count. And that's going to be the three variables returned from make move. Let's go ahead and update our assertions to make sure everything is working correctly as well. So we're going to have new board as our expected result. We're also going to have a new counter in here, and we're also going to have the move count. So I'm going to expect the move count to now become one from zero. I'm going to expect the counter to have become O. And if we save this off, of course it is going to fail because we're not returning any of those variables correctly. So let's go ahead and update everything and get everything passing. The first thing we're going to need to do this is to make sure we're returning the correct values from here. So let's head over to make move and implement that one. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new variable here. I'm going to call this one board and it's going to be equal to that result. And we know this is already working, so I'm just going to go ahead and return board. And if we save that off, we should hopefully be getting a little bit further in our tests. Apparently we're not, this actually should be called new board, not board. So let's go ahead and update that variable. And I would expect that first assertion to now pass. And so it does. We're getting to our second assertion, which is the counter. Let's go ahead and implement that as well. We're going to return the counter in here, and this is fairly easy. We're just going to see if the current counter is equal to, let's say, x. If it is, we're going to return o, otherwise we are going to return x. And this is going to get our second assertion passing. The final one is going to be the move count, and this is not something we're easily able to track in here. We actually would be very easy to be able to derive this value. We could just check how many counters are left remaining in the board and derive it. But to keep things simple, what I am going to do is pass it in as a variable here, and I'm going to call this one move counter or move count is probably a better name. All we're going to do is increment that one. Of course, we're not going to mutate the value, we're going to return a new value. So I'm going to say move count, which is going to be move count plus one. And that's going to give us that new value. Let's save it off. We are still getting a failure here because we're not passing in the correct value here. Let's go ahead and do that. We have to pass in the current move count. So I'm just going to update my variable here and that's going to have to be move count of zero. Let's go right over to the end and say move count is going to be equal to zero and that should get everything passing. Uh, we are actually having a failure now that's going to be on our integration test. That's because we haven't updated the implementation to have the correct move count. So let's go ahead and do that now. We can see the functional core is now passing, so we can be confident our business logic is correct. However, the imperative shell test is now failing. This is good. Our separation has allowed us to easily isolate the part of our system that has the error. Let's head down to our implementation and figure out what is going on. So we're going to jump down to our make move function down here and figure out what we need to do. We need to pass in the new move count here. So I'm going to say move count is equal to current counter or current move, I believe we called it, current move dot value. Let's save it off and see what happens. Everything is still failing, unfortunately. This is not a very useful uh, test result here. Uh, it does tend to be the nature of it. The imperative shell tests are not as easy to diagnose, of course, because they're using global variables and mutation, but we will figure this one out. So all we changed was to change the return values in here. We have to update the return value here. So we're going to grab the new values in here. This one is going to have new state. I actually called it new board, I believe. So I'm actually going to update the name of this as well. I'm going to call this one new board. We're also going to have a few new values in here. We're going to have the new counter. We're going to have the new move count. Now we're going to update our mutable variables using those new values down here. So current counter dot value is just going to be equal to, to, to counter actually. And current move dot value is just going to be equal to, uh, that's going to be move count. Let's save this off and see what happens. And everything is now passing. Definitely a good place to be. Uh, you can see how difficult it was to diagnose the error here. This is the nature of kind of imperative shell tests. Normally I'll be using something like a browser to diagnose this or even something like Cypress, which is going to give me a UI failure, much easier to read. But either way, we did end up getting everything working and we can be confident everything is working correctly because all of our tests are now passing. Another thing we should note is we successfully isolated our business logic all inside of our make move function, which is part of our functional core, making it very easy to one day move to another framework if we have to, for example, react.